Hello, and I'm Yang Ray with the dialogue. December the second is a day that will go down in China's legal history. Justice was finally seen to be done by the Supreme People's Court, which announced acquittal for a 20-year-old man called Nie Shubin. He was wrongly convicted of murder and sentenced to death 21 years ago by the Provincial People's Court in Hebei Province. However, public opinion was divided over accountability. Was it the flawed local legal system to blame? How should we regard the enormous efforts of both lawyers and the media over the last decade, when solid evidence had emerged in 2005 that it was someone else who had committed the first-degree murder? Should capital punishment be abolished? What can be done to ensure the rule of law? Today, we are pleased to be joined by Victor Gaojikai, current affairs commentator, and Edward Lehman, managing director of Lehman Li and Xu. Welcome to dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Why have the general public and the media, in particular, responded so strongly to the acquittal 21 years after the case was wrongly,、uh, uh, um, after the wrong verdict was given、uh, 21 years ago? Well, first of all, in the simplest term, I think common sense dictates that when you know for sure someone did not commit the crime of murder, did not kill that person, and he was wrongly accused and convicted, and then he was sentenced to death and got executed, then something went wrong in the justice process, and something need to be done to correct the wrong. Conviction, and I think this time today,、uh, justice has been restored, and the conviction of Mr. Nie has been overturned. His reputation will be rehabilitated, and this is a good day in China, even though at the cost of the life of Mr. Nie 20 years ago. So I think the people here in this country are rejoicing this moment because this is the right thing to do. And what was done to Mr. Nie 20 years ago was injustice. Was wrongful、uh, and was a miscarriage、uh, of justice. Edward,、uh, many critics in this country argue that the acquittal by the Supreme People's Court might be a small step in the correct direction, but it could be a giant leap for the progress of China's rule of law. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you for sure. I mean, I think there's a few things. One is that. That any governmental organization in any country is willing to say that they were wrong. Okay, so whether it's the the court system or the the policing system, to say they're wrong is a very difficult thing, and there's a pushback for that. And you don't just see it here in China. But I think that the signal coming right on the on the heels of private property, because your own life. Is in itself a, a, your own property in what you're supposed to be doing with it in the state, putting you to death. It, it actually is a big signal, I think, to the rule of law. And I and I think it's tragic what happened to Mr. Nie. However, the the rehabilitation and taking the time, energy, and effort to be able to to turn it around and say we were wrong with this is is an amazing thing by any government. People across the country are painfully reflecting upon what went wrong 21 years ago. Um, what do you think of the role of the、uh, Central Discipline Inspection Committee of the CPC?、Uh, many argue that were it not for their intervention, which led to the arrest of two most powerful guys、uh, in Hebei Province. One was the former Party Secretary of the Provincial Committee of the CPC. The other, Zhang Yue,、uh, he was sent、uh, from the Ministry of Security to be. Uh, someone in charge of the judiciary and the legal affairs of Hebei Province. These two guys were all、uh, were both arrested on charges of corruption. Now, did this arrest pave the way for very rapid solution to this、uh, tragedy? I would say we need to give full credit, first of all, to the Supreme People's Court. In China, which actually、uh, got involved and、uh, made the right decision this time. Secondly, to the CPC Central Committee、uh, Disciplinary Commission.、Uh, why? Because the CPC Central Committee's、uh, Disciplinary Commission did the right thing of putting、uh, the former Secretary, Party Secretary of Hebei Province, and the former Province Disciplinary Commission、uh, behind the bars for investigation for their. Uh, injustice and corruption, and this actually lifted the、uh, effort by the local government to ignore the reality and try to firmly hold on to the lid on the conviction of Mr. Ye and the execution of this、uh, innocent person. And I think、uh, this demonstrated the courage of the ruling party, the Communist Party of China, here to go to the hilt. 
to justice to the injustice done many, many decades ago. But this is an irretrievable loss for the family of the victim. Um, what do you think of uh, the uh, nasty efforts by Mr. Zhang Yue, a former uh, uh, secretary in charge of the disciplinary committee on the provincial level in Hebei, mm -hmm. who had done what he could to obstruct justice? Well, you know, uh, when we look in the rearview mirror on any scenario, okay, we can pinpoint it or telescope it into one particular event, say this event with Mr. Nye. I think that we have to look at these things separately. We had talked about it before the show, you and I, Young Ray, about the idea that there were crackdowns, there were purges, people are going for law and order. When there's uh, uh, unrest and discipline and there are different movements that happen within the country, so to look back in reverse and say that this had to do simply with corruption is probably too simple. Mm -hmm. I think it's more that there were, there were certain forces at that time that were saying we're going to be tough on law and order, we're going to bring people to justice, we're going to public uh, uh, right to be able to put this guy quickly to justice, who they thought was the original killer. Are you talking about what Mr. Duterte, Filipino president, is doing in the streets of Manila to fight uh, uh, crimes and uh, drugs. Uh, I mean, he uh, he became very angry with the President Obama, who accused him of violating human rights. Uh, he was emphasizing the importance of efficiency, getting things done quickly, right. regardless of the procedure of fairness. What do you think of the uh, the vulnerability of uh, such a uh, kind of uh, rule of man mm -hmm. instead of rule no, of I law? Think I think in any circumstance, under whatever pressure, due process need to be done. Uh, if you really uh, shortchange the due process, if you really go to the hilt in pushing for speed and efficiency at the cost of equity and fairness and justice, that's the wrong thing to do. Now, uh, we do not need to talk too much about what's happening in the Philippines, and I think uh, the Filipino government and President Duterte may have a reason to really eliminate the scourge of uh, of a drug uh, problems in that country, but here in China, I don't think it's only case uh, for the wrongful execution and taking away of their lives, mainly because in our country, unfortunately, at different historical moments, there were many, many political campaigns which called for speedy uh, dealing with the so-called criminals, but then the law justice department probably did not go to the hilt in terms of checking all the details, leaving no stone unturned in very, very all the details and sometimes they did put death and that's the wrongful thing and we need to do whatever that's necessary to uh, give justice a chance. The other similar tragic uh, wrong verdict against uh, Mr. Hu Jigolotu from Mongolia mm. also reminds us of uh, the uh, severity of the high-handed crackdown campaign that was launched at least twice, uh, first in the 1980s and then the early 1990s, uh, to uh, clear crimes in the streets. Right. Uh, uh, but at the same time, a tragedy did occur. Um, in our review of uh, how to build a, a healthy legal system and strengthen the spirit of rule of law, what challenges are lying ahead? Well, you know, I mean, what we've seen and what you've seen since you've been hosting the show, Young Ray, is the, is the Supreme Court reviewing death penalties and then, and then letting it go to the provinces. You've seen a, a shift from these crackdowns and these campaigns, which happen in the United States as well. I mean, law and order, the drugs, uh, the war on drugs, these kind of things are, no one's going to say we don't want to have, be tough on criminals and tough on law. The issue, like Victor said, I think is one of civil procedure, one of evidence, one of a procedure. Now, if you look at Mr. Nye's case, from the time that he was arrested to the time he was convicted is was 217 days. Then it took another 10 years uh, until things came out, and then it's 20 years until he's been rehabilitated or his record has been rehabilitated. Um, and, and I think that this speaks, again, to the volume. If we look at it in the rearview mirror, we've got 200,000 lawyers in China. Very small number. A lot of them are not involved in this kind of thing. It's an infrastructure problem. Back then, 20 years ago, it was a, it was a different case altogether. And Shi Jiajuang, even smaller still. So it, it's difficult to, to judge, I guess, what, what's happened in the rearview mirror. But the same case in Inner Mongolia. It was a very speedy trial. But that's what the tenor of the times were about, to try to keep things organized, I think, at, the, at that point in time. Do you think uh, further yeah. recommendation is needed in this case? further recrimination. Of course, Do you think I more think people should be brought to justice, those who were 
directly responsible for the quick execution? No, I think uh, two things. Uh, one is we need to uh, go into the details to find out who was or were responsible for this uh, wrongful conviction and taking away of the life of Mr. Nier. And uh, I would not be surprised if uh, there was you know, too much uh, hastiness in uh, uh, wrapping up uh, the details for this uh, uh, situation and eventually uh, they did not even hesitate uh, at the cost of not having enough you know uh, details uh, put it on the table before they put Mr. Nier to death. It's too much of a speedy process without too much care for due process. Secondly I think we need to think about the institutional arrangement. In China, I think, the system where we put the police department, the prosecutor's department, and the people's court together under the uh, leadership of one single commission eventually may need to be uh, uh, reconsidered, uh, mainly because if you put these three different agencies which need to be uh, operating under checks and balances against each other into uh, under one roof, sometimes, for example, the police may have too much power because the prosecutor's department may not care so much about having a second look at the details they brought onto the table and the people's court may even not even bother about reconsidering all the details. And I think building up enough checks and balances between the police department, the prosecutor's office, and the people's court will be eventually considered highly necessary and it need to be done in this country. One critical point that, that deserves a second and closer look about the case of Nye Shubin is uh, why we should uh, move uh, the suspects from the place where crimes uh, took place uh, to another place uh, to avoid the meddling by the locals, uh, to avoid being affected by unnecessary administrative intervention. I mean, in, in many times, with, uh, with at least the justice system in the United States, they can't get a fair, what they say, a fair trial, so they move the venue. Uh, the, the Simi Valley was, uh, was the place where they had some uh, uh, people who had uh, committed some acts of, of uh, insubordination and, and disarray and chaos in Los Angeles following the Rodney King uh, beating. And so the, the police were not actually tried there, they were tried in a different location, these were Los Angeles uh, County Police. So th there could be a lesson from that, I, I think, and, and there is with the local municipality, it's probably not realistic, but with the local municipality with regards to questioning. I think right the council in a very quick manner is also would also be very helpful. In this particular case, he uh, endured, Mr. Nye, about five days of interrogation um, that, were, that were prolonged, and, and anyone uh, would have a very difficult time overcoming that. But again, I don't want to paint the brush completely broad. These kinds of things happen in the United States. America is enamored with a Netflix thing called The Making of a Murder, and it was in Wisconsin where there was seemingly the prosecutor, seemingly the public, uh, uh, the public defender, was not was stepping on the on the scales of justice and making it uneven and this was a very probably the most popular uh, show in in uh, netflix history certainly and also on the radio something called serial which is podcast uh, that was the number one podcast in the world and it was about uh, unfair justice uh, system that was happening in maryland so i mean these types of things are happening worldwide i think the significant thing about tonight is the fact that the, the, we're talking about it and that it's public and that's great. That's letting all the, uh, the sunshine The out. verdict and the critical by the Supreme People's Court will definitely become a uh, wake-up call and a classical case for the textbooks of uh, students and the scholars of law in this country. Having said this, uh, um, what do you think of uh, uh, compensations for the family of uh, Nye Shubin and Hu Jigele too from uh, Mongolia? I mean, don't you think the wake-up call should indeed enlighten those uh, uh, professionals and uh, 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 potential perpetrators of a similar crime uh, to remind them of uh, the 
implications and uh, consequences arising from wrong handling? I think uh, no matter how much compensation there eventually will be for the family of Mr. Nye, uh, it will not be sufficient, mainly because as far as their, his parents are concerned, they just wanted to have their son back. If he were still alive, he would be 41 years old, in the prime of his life, doing so many things, having his own family, and uh, that's taken away, and I think uh, in our country, we have a state compensation law which would uh, enable compensation given to the victims or their families if the state, the state, the government in this case, uh, commits the wrong thing of taking away people's lives in the wrongful manner. And I think this is the right thing to do. But I would emphasize that uh, the biggest winner today is justice in China uh, at the cost of Mr. Nia's life. But I hope eventually, whenever there is a case involving potentially a death sentence, the state need to be extra, extra careful. And hopefully, eventually, there will be no more death sentence in this country, but it may take so many years before we, we can reach that We did a very stage. heavy price uh, mm. for the healthy improvement of the legal system here, and uh, uh, it, it has taken many innocent lives uh, to uh, upgrade the flawed legal system. But you are watching Dialogue with uh, Victor Gaujikai and Edward Lehman. We're discussing the importance and certainly significant implications of a verdict, the latest verdict by the Supreme People's Court to give a quitter to Mr. Nia Shubin, who was wrongly convicted of murder 21 years ago. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. Many lawyers and journalists deserve credit for their joint appeal for justice to be done over the past 21 years. Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, I mean, Nye Shubin finally uh, is cleared and rehabilitated. Um, how much uh, does it take for uh, a decent lawyer to go ahead no matter what? They don't give a damn about the local political pressure or whatever interventions. They just demand that justice be done and be mm -hmm. done properly and quickly uh, without giving any more wrong verdicts. I think, uh, in a sense, this is exactly what a lawyer is supposed to do. The lawyers, uh, being attorneys at law, need to be fearless uh, defender of the justice and of law, and they should really spare no effort. If there is a chance for them to stand out at the risk of their own lives, for example, to advocate for justice. Now, in this some country, of the lawyers may have faced uh, uh, threat, uh, letters of threat. I mean, uh, sure. they, they, there are families that could be seriously threatened yeah, by it, it, uh, the interest groups. Yeah, if I may add a point, in our country, I think we need to really improve our perception of the lawyer. I think the government need to be more tolerant of what the lawyers are doing and they should not become obstacles or resistance points against the lawyers doing what they are supposed to do. Of course, if the lawyers uh, misbehave, for example, or do not abide by the professional ethics or abide by the law, that's another matter. But if you defend the interest of the clients and uh, advocate uh, justice, that's what they are supposed to do. No one should obstruct and, them and from doing that. And one of the most that. famous uh, lawyers uh, in recent years mm. is perhaps Li Zhuang, mm. who is directly involved uh, in the investigation about the improper and illegal crackdown that was launched by Bo Xilai, a former Politburo member who was uh, arrested and sentenced to years of imprisonment on charges of corruption. Mm -hmm. Now, this classical case also reminds the price that, and the dangers that the lawyer could be facing. Do you think in the United States you also went through similar history? Oh, certainly. And I mean, you look at Clarence Darrow. So he did the, the, the Scopes Monkey Trial. He did uh, Leopold and Loeb case. These are all cases in the 1910s, 1920s. And he was way out there at that point in time, being a zealous advocate, which is, I, I agree with Victor. I mean, you've got to have that check and balance, that tension that the other lawyers brings to, to, to the table. If it's just a complete, uh, if there's no uh, examination of the evidence, no examination of the facts, I mean, those people are either exceptionally brave or they are out of their minds. I mean, so they're one or the other. And, and the same was said about Clarence Darrow, although, his reputation is a bit tarnished 
but at the same time, I mean, he has to. He did a check and balance too, and he led the way. And and those people uh, should be commended certainly. For you know, Tom Hanks deserved credit for his beautiful role in the、uh, Bridge of Spies,、mm. in the Hollywood blockbuster.、Mm. He was asked to defend the Russian spy、mm. during the Cold War, and that somehow reflects、mm. vividly and accurately the spirit of a rule of law in the in the United States. The the, the association of bar. I mean,、uh, that. That has indeed impressed many Chinese observers who follow the rule of law in the United States.、Uh, in fact, we are、uh, fast catching up,、uh, despite the stupid mistakes that led to the tragedy of、uh, near Shu Bin.、Uh, what about the abolition of the capital punishment?、Uh, since、uh, there are always such possibilities that、uh, wrong verdicts could be given, however hard you tried,、uh, mm-hmm. tragedies、uh, could be inevitable. Mm. I would say, in an ideal society, there should be no death penalty.、Uh, having said that, in the world today, the death penalty. In the world today, there are still many、uh, countries. I think are still several、uh, dozens of countries, including China,、uh, Russia, and the United States, and even Japan, for example, which still keep the death penalty.、Uh, penalty. I would say. That the argument for abolishing the death penalty should be weighed、uh, by considering whether the abolishment of the death penalty itself will actually result in more deaths,、uh, killing of people by the criminals. And I think once we can reach that equilibrium point, then the death penalty probably should be abolished. In China, I don't think right time, right now, is the right time to、Perhaps、abolish. Perhaps our culture, our history, and the public opinion would not allow. Uh, the legal system or the central government of China to abolish the death penalty very quickly, but the promise by the Supreme People's Court to review seriously、mm-hmm. the death penalty would be one small step in the correct direction. Don't you think this is a, something good? Oh something yeah, no, no, I think I think it's great, I, and, and I agree with you, Young Ray. I think that that the Chinese culture, and even when there are cases in the United States where where Chinese、uh, overseas Chinese or or people have come to visit and have been murdered, that the families come over. And depending on the place in the United States, there are states that permit、uh, execution, and then there are others that do not. And it seems that they're they're calling for for that ultimate justice. So this, this may be closer、um, in in the society. So, but that being said, the European Union. I mean, every one of those nations at one point in time was was、uh, dealing、mm-hmm. with the, the death penalty. And and I think that this is a, a new newer nation as far as in a newer newer legal system, and it's more difficult. But at the same time, you one have to have that tension. Two, you've got to have a judiciary that's actually deciding on the facts. Three, you've got to have a civil procedure that's going to be. Led by everyone, so the evidence that comes in is correct or incorrect. And the third thing is, is that with the judiciary, it has to be the people hearing the case. This is where there's a little bit of pushback. It's not the administrator, administrative judges who are giving some input that did not be a part of the trial, which is what Victor was saying with due process. People have to see the evidence. You have to see evidence. When, and you have to see your accuser as well before you're sentenced to death. So I mean,、uh, if possible.、Uh, the, the next issue is、uh, we know how difficult it is for the Chinese authorities to abolish the capital punishment given、uh, the pressure of history and the public opinion, for one reason or another. But what do we think of the role of the media? Because、uh, sufficient oversight has to be exercised to make sure that、uh, mistakes will be minimized.、Mm. However, in the United States. Freedom of the media is protected by the First Amendment. In in, in China, I'm afraid the case is very different.、Uh, journalists at different levels, local and central, would have to be very very careful, so that they would not be punished by、uh, some of the institutions that are very、sure. embarrassing for、mm-hmm. those who follow the social progress in China. Right. I、it's、think、done. to have an independent independent media is very important, and、mm-hmm. this is what China will eventually need. To have、uh, years down the road, at least a greater latitude for Absolutely. investigative journalists. Absolutely, not just hand, for muckraking,、yeah. but for serious investigation, like 60 Minutes of six of CBS in the United States.、Right? E- exactly.、But、on the other hand, I think the media、uh, should also、uh, do things in a very responsible way, and、uh, eventually, I think,、uh, with the further expansion of internet, everyone becomes a media person, and、uh, I think the government should try to block. The exercise of the media, because eventually you will be faced with、uh, the 1.4 billion Chinese people. Each one has a、uh, WeChat to send messages to the broad masses of the people. So, to deal with the media, allow the media to do its job in a 
professional way is the only right thing to do going forward. But I think they're doing that, Victor. I mean, I think one of the rules yeah. that was passed that you can actually take pictures of police, you can actually video, yeah, right. which is which is great. I mean, so the, the government is is exactly doing what what you're saying, yeah, right. and 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 I I totally agree with you that the. The media acts as a bit of a watchdog. The media also, in the United States, we, we have freedom of speech, and this creates problems too. There was a, a congressman called Gary Conduit. His his intern was was murdered, and there was some discussion about whether he had committed this act. Completely false. And you, but you can be accused of this stuff. This this 200 or 300 pound gorilla is looking at you, which is the media, and you can't get any peace of mind. That's also unfair too. So I mean. The media is a very powerful tool, and, and we've seen it with the uh, the human search engine, the flesh search engine in China, um, and, and it has to be con controlled as well. It, it, it's, you know, it could get out of control. Earlier, almost at the very beginning of our interview tonight, I asked the question about compensation for the family. Mm -hmm. They lost their loved ones once and for all. But what about apologies? So far, no apology has been received by the family of Nie Shu Bin. I mean, yeah. uh, this is a, eventually an issue of accountability. Now, Nie Shu Bin, along with uh, Hu Jigulotu in Mongolia, could be eventually cleared, the case closed. But the family does need an apology. They lost their only son. I mean, for 21 years, this mother has w walked hundreds upon hundreds of miles on foot uh, to demand justice, to ask for the ring of truth, right. to compensate for the loss of the loved one. So, I mean, what about the issue of accountability? Is it so difficult? No, I think uh, eventually it will be forthcoming, and I will be very much worried if it is not forthcoming from the local government, from the provincial government, uh, while we comment on the Supreme Court of uh, Supreme People's Court in China to, for doing the right thing, the local government need to visit the family, need to compensate them, need to do other things to make them whole, and also really clear the name of Mr. Ye for the benefit of their family members, but also for the Chinese society at large. If they don't do that, then let's get all united and demand that they need to do the right thing. There are many unknown heroes, sure. including lawyers and journalists, uh, local government officials and even some law enforcement personnel within the local legal system of Hebei province. But one uh, woman should, ab should be absolutely the hero, the mother of Mr. Yeah. Shubin. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. She deserves our respect, commands our absolute respect uh, for her yes. heroic spirit of resilience. Now, William Shakespeare says, women, their name is weak. However, uh, uh, Victor Hugo, uh, Hugo the French writers. Yes, yeah, sure. mother is great. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. But you know what's interesting about Victor the compensation? Hugo. Yeah, Victor Hugo, and, and uh, th there's no doubt about what you said exactly. And I, the compensation for the Inner Mongolia, the, the gentleman in Inner Mongolia, was thirty thousand RMB. Uh, there were twenty-seven people who were eventually arrested and and, and convicted with regards to that in Inner Mongolia. Um, that case didn't make as much of a splash, I think, as this one in particular. But there should be an apology. There should be compensation. Right. We also see it in the United States, though, where, where we so don't. So further recommendation needs yeah. to be yes. done. Thank yes, you very much for your participation. And that's the end of this discussion about Nie Shu Bin, a wake-up call in the legal history of China. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.